Welcome to this week, 60 minutes of analytical review of the big stories, topical issues and all the controversies around the world. I'm Sumner Sambu. Coming up, the restructuring debate continues. Prominent Nigerians are calling for restructuring. They say it is time to remove and reshape Nigeria. The rising insecurity in the southwest region. Governor Rotimi Akire Dolu has given seven days ultimatum to Fulani headers in Ondo State to vacate. We have analysis. Plus, Joe Biden becomes the 46th president of the United States. Plans to unify America. We have analysis coming up. The call for a radical reform of Nigeria's political and economic structure is ringing out once again. A national dialogue on the subject held during the week by one of this country's prominent national newspapers, the Daily Trust. Notable advocates of restructuring say it is time to contemplate radical change. Meanwhile, Nigeria's former President Gulag Jonathan says while current agitations for restructuring are not misplaced, restructuring alone may not solve all the anomalies in the country due to the attitude of Nigerians. Let's take a listen. Country, we have our peculiar challenges and we should devise means of solving them. But we should not continue to vent our spleen on the amalgamation. As Shakespeare in Julius Caesar said, the fault is not in our stars, but in ourselves. 49 people elected, I mean, selected to write a constitution, wrote a constitution. 40 people in the Supreme Military Council promulgated a constitution for us. Under General Abubakar, a government in which I served, I was in executive council. I never saw the draft constitution. And I was minister of information. It was my responsibility to publicize it to the country. On the day of swearing in of Obasanjo, we didn't have a copy of the constitution. I didn't know who was printing it. And my ministry was supposed to pay for the printing. And Obasanjo was sworn on a constitution that had not been read by anybody. And the National Assembly could not be constituted until four days after he swore in it, because there was no clean copy of the constitution. You cannot build on quicksand. And the country cannot live on falsehood. There are serious technical problems of the definition of what are nationalities in Nigeria. Secondly, even if we assume that yes, there are ethnic groups, and the Igbos, Yorubas, Hausa, or Hausa Fulani are ethnic groups. How do you choose those to go into that conference that you are proposing? Representation for constitution making are usually, in fact, invariably territorial, not ethnic. So we will be trying to move from one problem and run into another, you know, if, if we think that uh, uh, the ethnic group will be the foundation of addressing what you perceive to be a big sun. We're looking at the incremental, incremental option. If there are things we can do between now and 2023, because it is absolutely essential that we commence the restructuring before 2023. Otherwise, restructuring will become a hostage of the competition for elections in 2023. If we don't restructure now, it will become an election issue. Election issue. Parts of the country will say either you give us the presidency or we don't restructure, and then it becomes a hostage. It's too important to be made a hostage of petty politics. Many families are in deep distress. Young people can't find a job. You can't build an industry. We're talking of agriculture. It's very hard to start a large farm. You need money from the bank. You can't find the collateral. So we have children and grandchildren, young people, literally walking around in despair. Well, the idea is that if Nigeria is restructured with less power at the center and more autonomy for the regions, each region could then exploit its own natural resources in what is called fiscal federalism. Well, for analysis on this, let's turn to Sonny Moni Dafe, who is the chieftain of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, and also by Honorable Sani Zoru, a former member of the House of Representatives, who likes calling himself a reporter because he was <laughs> former president of the Nigerian Union of Journalists. Good to have you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah. And le so let's start with you, uh, Honorable Member. How much of uh, mm. restructuring do we really need right now as a country? And then can it be done in bits or should be done in wholesale mm. by the National Assembly? Or do you think we need a constituent assembly like it was done in the past before 1979? Or 
Should we have another national political reforms conference like it was done in 1995 by yeah. the regime of former Legend Hassani Abacha? Yes. Well, first of all, <clears throat> I completely agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. I completely agree on the idea of reorganizing our polity. Whether the name to be given to it is restructuring or anything else. But my own idea of restructuring is not probably the one shared by so many people who have spoken, either at the Daily Trust uh, Dialogue Forum or on the ongoing debate that has been raging on in the country. I have a completely different idea. And what Our was own idea? idea is that we should be able to migrate power and exercise power horizontally instead of vertically. By this, we, uh, there is every available evidence to indicate that based on the 1999 constitution, which is a continuation more or less of the 1979 constitution, we have only succeeded in entrenching emperors as presiding officers at the executive branch of government at the federal, state, as well as local government levels. So because we have emperors, in fact, the drift is so evident that succession, uh, succession for power is now based, you know, on hereditary practices. So many governors have their own sons and daughters placed, you know, as their own special assistants, you know, aides and so on. And they are working towards, you know, getting them to succeed them. This was what characterized even the latest 29 elections. Even if you go to the National Assembly, 2019 elections. If you go to the National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly also, it is very common to see legislators with their own children serving as senior special assistants, special assistants, and all sorts of aids. And I'm sure the framers of the Nigerian constitution did not contemplate installing emperors, people who will eventually end up as dictators. And that is why there is a need to diffuse power and make sure that it is flat. By flat, it means that we will have a parliamentary-driven democracy so that representation will be more of a symbol of democratization instead of having demigods or people who like to play God simply because they are in charge of the resources and they hold the entire system to ransom. Okay, very and interesting. Yes. Let's have your views. Uh, your party actually promised Nigerians restructuring. We had a committee set up uh, by, uh, which was led by uh, Governor Nasser Erufai. Uh, but it looks like that report is just lost in uh, the library of the APC. Well, <laughs> so I will not, I am, what I will if it has any. <laughs> I will not speak for the APC. But yeah, no, but why? I know. you can't deny that you're a member of the, the party. The, no, the, the party. Doesn't have, he's not speaking for the party. No, there is no ID. <laughs> <He's not laughs> Nobody has an ID for the APC now. Right, as we okay, okay, well, let's get fresh. Uh, come yes. to the 5th January. But my own <laughs> personal opinion is that I am totally against restructuring. Restructuring must start with our attitudes. You will agree with me that if you give, you, brought, you bring down any, any set of governance this country, any type of governance this country. If we don't change our attitudes, nothing will happen. Like what uh, he what said, President Gulag Jonathan said? Incidentally, I was telling somebody <laughs> that I'm surprised one of the leaders carried a news item and pushed my, co my, my comments side by side with uh, Gulag Abele Jonathan's comment. I said for the first time, we're on the same page. We must change our attitude. Whatever we bring. He just made a comment about people going into government and then their sons, their cousins, their nephews, and their peers, or they, they, they will send their children's names to somebody to make them an essay. It's like becoming more, more inclusive for them. Now, that is part of the attitude. We must change our attitude before we can make progress. If you bring in a parliamentary system of government today, if we don't change the attitude, like when the, the late Alex Ekwene mentioned six zonal vice presidents, if you dare do that, every zonal vice president will have a whole setup, SAs, SA to SA, PA to SA, and what have you. So our attitudes must change. 
Yeah, I, but they, I, we must restructure based on what Nigerians are no. saying. No. So what, what kind the of restructuring? For one, because that's the it means a lot. What kind of restructuring? Restructuring means a lot to many people. If you ask the South Israelites, for example, restructuring means giving them power. And in politics, you don't give power. You, you, you negotiate. You stretch out across the Niger and reach compromises. I don't stand for a where a zone will be blackmailing the country to be given power. It is wrong. My personal opinion is the South, that part of Nigeria, should have the presidency come to the But it must be negotiated. Don't arm twist, don't blackmail. Having said that, what Professor Jega said about the people that will make up the Constituent Assembly if we want to restructure, if we want to amend our constitution. So now, I speak for millions of Nigerians. When I say I am Delta by origin, Adamawa by birth, FCT by residence. My father left Wari in 1950 for Jimmy I was born there 64 years ago. I've been in Abuja for 22 years. So by right, I belong to everywhere. I speak for millions. If one want to elect me to the, to the Constitutional Assembly, who will look at me? So we'll just be going round and round, wasting our time. What we have now, if we can change our attitudes, we can make it work. Okay, now let's talk about um, yeah. some of the allegations that have come out of uh, all of this talk. That, yeah. for example, the North is afraid of restructuring because mm. in the, 60, uh, in the 50, uh, late 50s, when we're about approaching the independence, that mm. was the same thing that happened because they, they said that in, in, in an independent Nigeria, they wouldn't know what their future would look like. Mm. Some people are also saying that in a restructured Nigeria, the North is afraid of what the future would look like for it. Mm. What, what's your view well, on first that? First of all, the latest one has been debunked you know and adequately even at the media dialogue you know we just had uh, there was no group from the northern parts of the country that had not supported the idea of restructuring in whatever shape the only thing that the uh, supporters of restructuring from the northern groups said is that we should have a forum and discuss unconditionally and that should be devoid of the kind of blackmail an irredentism that has characterized the debate from some parts of the country. Mm -hmm. That is one. Secondly, I was disappointed that the presenters, and I had said so, that the, presentate, uh, the presenters at the forum failed to trace the collapse of the idea of a federated Nigeria on account of Decree 34 under the General Ironsi administration. Because General Ironsi administration, Which when he came Nigeria, to you need you need to to the, exactly. away from the federalism. E that exactly. And he had the option of continuing with the federal system of government. But he imposed that unitary and government, and that's what scattered Nigeria's evolution towards a, you know, a very viable federal you know, uh, 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 state just like India, like Ghana, like Uganda, like so many others that were bequeathed by the British. That's one. Then the coup of 1966 itself, if we pretend to forget about the implication of that to the idea of restructuring, then we are not being honest and it won't work. Why do I say so? Soldiers who happen to come from a part of the country and supported clearly by the political establishment of that part of the country, went over to another region, wiped off the political and military elite of that part of the country, murdered the prime minister as well as prominent other ministers, and they were not tried. Well, and nothing was, happened there to was them. A counter coup. Yes. And uh, all those who were exactly. involved were actually, uh, uh, you know, arrested and all of that. But nothing happened to them. And, and so that was the implication of the that, actually, the to the president's demand for The implication is that, you remember, uh, in 1994 or so, that is what triggered the reprisal attack by Hutsis. You know, when Hutsis were massacring Tutsis, Tutsis, and Tutsis, and Tutsis in, uh, as a result of which 800,000 people were massacred. This is the kind of thing that happened in 1966. So we need to address that one, first of all. However, coming to the northern position, I'm not a spokesperson for either ACF or the, uh, the, the Northern Elders Forum, but I associate myself and I'm a member of the Northern, uh, 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 northern Awakening Forum. And our own idea is that we should be able to restructure based on the six 
zonal idea that was contemplated during the Abacha conference. Oh, okay, let's have the views on now, uh, now, and, and that. That means... They, they were, uh, just hold on, let's <laughs> yes. have his views, actually, because there was this position paper by Professor Jibreni Bryan and some other elites in the country who have said that we should Friends return, of democracy. Yes, friends of democracy, who have said that we should return to, to the 12 states, states yes. that we had before uh, the states were broken into... Mm. Well, so he, he is an so unbeliever. He doesn't so, believe in well, it. So now, <laughs> should we go back to the regional so system or the 12 well, states? Our or attitude changed we before maintain the then. Six states? Well, our attitudes changed before then. Well, if elites One, like you two. work on the minds of Nigerians... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Where will I be called to be relevant? Because I'm a northerner, if you ask me. I'm a northerner, and I've not been invited for any meeting. He knows me. Adobe knows me. They all know me. Yeah, so, and that's so, why we expect you to be on, one of those that change the attitude they of They will not even invite you in the first instance. That's the point I'm making. Because right now, yes, people were wronged. When I, when I saw, I'm wearing this, January 15, the end of the coup and whatever, the lives that were lost, I was about 10 years old then. Very wrong. But we're talking about 50-something years ago. Let's move on. Both sides lost people, very unfortunately. Let's move on. Now, how do you move on? If you want to have a review of constitution or whatever, you must take into cognizance the fact that many people in their millions by birth have become indigenous of a particular zone. Yeah, and that's why we had that APC restructuring committee requesting or, or proposing that the issue of state of origin should be replaced with state of residence. Fantastic. And we are wondering why your party hasn't given it, you know, uh, the, um, the go ahead. Let, let but me 2019, just, it was one of the things your party used you, it to let me just Let me give you an expo, Nigerians. if you don't mind, okay. and if right now. <laughs> if the national chairmanship of the APC is zoned to the northeast, I'm going to contest from the notice for national president of the APC, and such things will be addressed. Your word should be your bond. Why has it not been implemented? Maybe some people have some issues. They are scared of whatever. The point of fact is that if you don't correct this wrong today, tomorrow you're going to be in trouble. So we must accept the fact that we should arise, think outside the box. Yeah, and you propose changing of attitudes. What's that change of attitude that is needed? Like I'm saying right now, you go and anywhere you go, you're accepted. For example, I think I am so public in this country that if a northern group wants to meet, they should invite Sonny Monidafe. You do that one, that will go a long way in telling people that this will mean well. Yeah. If the reverse right. is the case in the South, will that be acceptable? They should do it as well. I because we are it. saying, we are actually going to go to the next topic that we'll be discussing, I, which is on Fulani is being asked to leave, I am to leave on those states good, or your state good, and the South was. Which is very wrong for me. Issue. Let me preempt you by saying it is wrong. It is wrong. almost like against it is wrong. the spirit and intentions of the Constitution. Good. Having said that, let me, let's finish with this topic. In worry. That's what they call house quarters. And I think almost all the towns, states, in towns in the states of the south, including southwest, you have house quarters. Are these house people, these indigenous, I mean, foreigners in quotes, accepted? Like I've been accepted in Yola, in Jimeta, nobody would dare yeah. say I'm not from social place. So that attitude of saying, because you are not from the, from Wari, for instance, we can't accept you, must stop. We have to stop it because we are one people who has zoning helped nobody. Okay, very interesting. Now let's hear your views <laughs> yes. on the issue of the National Assembly because like uh, uh, some elder statesmen have said that this now lies with the National Assembly because yes. even if you're forming a constituent assembly, mm. it is not recognized by the Constitution. Yes. The uh, uh, National Conference that was put together by uh, former President Gulag Jonathan mm. ended where it ended mm. because they did not have the power. Yes, There's no referendum also no, in the no Constitution. Law, like it up. Yes. Now, the National Assembly has said that they are collating all these views, the APC mm. Restructuring Committee mm. report, the National Confab mm. report, National Political Reforms Conference mm. report, and all others mm. to review them and see what can be done mm. in the Constitutional Review. How mm. far do you think the National Assembly can go? Yes. Well, first of all, I'm privileged to have participated in the 2014 you know, exercise, which failed. But it was a good attempt, and I can tell you the reasons why it failed. First of all, you have said that, constitutionally speaking, only the National Assembly is, has the responsibility for it's constitutional mm -hmm. alteration. Simple. That is what the Constitution says, and that's what we go by. It. When people argue that the 1999 Constitution is fraudulent, I just look at them. I look at them because state institutions, state and democratic institutions that we now use 
we now use to practice democracy itself and governance are derived from the provisions of the of the Constitution. And that's why you had you at the Banjo at the Daily Trust Forum actually saying that the National Assembly lacks the legitimacy to amend the Constitution because it's the product is a product of the 1999 Constitution itself. The 1999 Constitution is a continuation of the 1979 Constitution itself. Only about three provisions were altered. First of all, to incorporate the 36 state structure because from the 12th uh, state structure, as you know, 79. we had in, in, in 1979, we had other states promulgated, established mm -hmm. by the military, which have not been captured in a constitution because the constitution was suspended. Mm -hmm. So what the Nikki Toby chair committee did was to integrate it and capture it in the constitution. Then secondly, there was the issue of federal character and federal character commission, which was also provided for. Now, apart from that, there are all, only two other also issues. So when um, um, elder statesman, uh, 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 Uodo, I, 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 the immediate, I, 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 especially Uodo, John Uodo, the former minister, who was a minister I, was the surprised, I, I was sorry, surprised, I was surprised, Abu Salam, Abu Bakar, Abu Bakar no, he was a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria twice. Yes. In 1979, he was a beneficiary of the so-called fraudulent Constitution, because mm. that's what produced the government of President Shehu Shagari, whom he served initially between 79 and 1983 as a special assistant. And he disclosed how they were sitting on the table with President Shehu Shagari to have dinner with his children and everybody and because he was regarded as a son. <laughs> and then in 1983, he was also made Minister for Aviation by the then ruling MPN. Now, that same 1979 constitution was not only supported and endorsed by the two remaining uh, founding fathers in the names of Dr. Namdi Azikwe, yes, as well as Obafemi Awolo, who organized parties and ran for elections under that party, uh, sorry, under that constitution, that and actually installed governments in various parts of the country. And now someone who benefited, who was a functionary of that, <laughs> of that administration, is coming to say that it is a fraudulent constitution. He went to Chatham House to say so. He had been to so many UN organizations to say so. He had been to everywhere to say it was the most fraudulent constitution and that they would not. And even the well, he, administration he so that he had said so. He said he didn't see a even copy the, before the... But he why didn't he resign? Why didn't before he before resign? the public actually came into power. I thought he should have resigned honorably. Uh, okay. Because yeah. I knew him. I used to have a lot of respect for him. And he knows that. When he served as Minister for Information under the Abdul Salami Abu Bakr administration, why didn't he walk up to his principal to say, look, you give me that constitution so that I will publicize it, so that I will continue to project you, so that we will go on all the European tour he had been to, and everywhere else, you know, promoting the Abdul Salami Abu Bakr administration as the best thing that had happened to Nigeria. And now he is coming to say that President Obasanjo Joe was not sworn in on the basis of that constitution. That's not true. Secondly, it <laughs> took four days. As, as it took four around. days, like he said, to, you know, inaugurate the National Assembly. But it's not because there was no constitution, no. It was simply because politicians wanted, especially President Olishogo Obasanjo, they wanted to age out the late Chuba Okadibo, who had gone all over the country to campaign to become Senate, Senate president, president, and they wanted to replace him with Chief Evans or whatever. Well. So <laughs> to, do, to undo that, meetings were being held at this very Hilton Hotel, because this was where everybody came, you know, to stay in the National Assembly, you know, before the inauguration and so on. Everybody knew what happened. And I am a very conscious reporter. We monitor people. So there is a need actually to check reckless politicians who oh, contradict okay, themselves, uh, you know, uh, by uh, what they are saying. Right. Now, I, I, I actually want to go to Sonny <laughs> yes. Is this part of the change of attitude that we're talking about? Because politicians say one thing at night, by daytime they say something else, and the Nigerians are left confused. Definitely, Sumna. Definitely. Speaking for myself, my word is my bond. But many, look at it now, like you rightly said, you were the beneficiary twice. You didn't say anything. Now, because you're angling towards being given the national president uh, slot in, North East, in the Southeast, see what you are doing. We have to stop that. That is my worry. Because everybody goes into governance in this country thinking about what to get for themselves. Somebody talks about building institutions. We need strong individuals who will say the truth to build strong institutions. 
If you are individually strong, mentally strong, you have integrity, you will build a good structure. Now, now very, what we very, have, very quickly, because we will soon be going on a break, how soon do you think we should end this issue of restructuring, whether by the National Assembly or through executive fiat by the president and all of that, as we head to 2023 general election? My, Especially PDP statements saying that, look, uh, Buhari should just help to leave a country that is well restructured because himself and the APC will no longer be in existence. <laughs> <by 2023. laughs> Based on what? Well, For 16 years, they did nothing. In spite of $1 trillion from oil, nothing was done. Yeah. One job, name one road, they started and completed. For the 16 years they were there. Well, when they took how over soon should Ajabuta, we restructure Nigeria for me, we go into politics? For me, <laughs> let's restructure our attitudes. Anything we are going to do, we must think about Nigeria first. Forget about yourself. Yeah, but how soon should we have yes. either a constituent assembly or how yeah, soon should national assembly if they yes. wrap up this if, amendment if, very yes. quickly? Right now we have a national assembly. If they can do that, let them continue legitimizing this thing. Now for the various bodies that are going to be formed, think outside the box. Who can we invite that is not, was not from this region, but was born here? For example, I speak for myself. I know I speak for millions. Invite us to this set up because every family in this country almost every family in this country uh, has someone across the divide related through host to marriage or whatever uh, okay we must very think quickly as one. we also want to hear from you honorable yes, yes. i believe in how soon should this be concluded yes. before the 2023 general exactly election? the national assembly always has a standing committee on constitutional alteration and even when we served in the ex national assembly there were you know low hanging fruits that we were able to pick for instance the autonomy, you know, to uh, state houses of government assembly, of as well as local governments and so on. The president signed off on one of them, that is the autonomy for local governments, only for the governors to conspire amid the presidencies, and they have now succeeded in truncating it. Now, there are one, two, three, four, five that we can achieve between them, because all we need is a, an elite consensus. Once the Nigerian elite are agitated and insist that they want to restructure, we have to look at what they are saying. Oh, because okay. it is not only in our own country. There are so many other countries All right. that just have a very raw cost just, elite. We just have to go right now for a short break. Well, time for a short break here. There's more when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to This Week, I'm Somna Sambo. The one-week deadline given to Fulani headsmen by the Ondo state government to leave forest reserves in the state continues to generate heated debate, with the presidency cautioning against such unconstitutional eviction, while the Allah Afin of Oyo has written an open letter to President Muhammad Buhari to intervene on the matter. Let's take a listen. Ondo state governor wrote to Akiri Jolu insists that the ultimatum issued to Fulani headers on Monday to vacate forest reserves in the state remains in place, despite the presidency describing the act as unconstitutional and contrary to established relations among the country's diverse ethnic groups. But Special Advisor to the Ondo State Governor on Security Matters, Jimo Dojuma, says the ultimatum remains. He says, The truth is that if they still want to remain in the forest, let them register. We want to know the people occupying our forest. Those perpetrating the heinous act are using the forest to cover up their crimes. There is therefore need to flush out the criminals from the forest. Let them disobey and we know how to carry it out. The presidency in the statement by presidential spokesman Garba Shehu is asking Governor Akiri Dolu to halt the ultimatum. It insists that there is little to be said other than to call for restraint on both sides and the leadership of the Fulani communities to continue their dialogue for a good understanding that will bring to an urgent end the nightmarish security challenges facing the state. The government of Ondo and all the 35 others across the Federation must draw clear lines between the criminals and the law-abiding citizens who must equally be saved from the infiltrators. Secretary General of Afenifer, Shende Arogbofa, says Governor Akeri Dolu has taken the right step because illegal people have virtually taken over all lands in Nundu state, while stating that as the Chief Security Officer of the state, Akeri Dolu can issue such an ultimatum, contrary to the presidency directives. Ondo State Chairman of Mieti Allah Katu Breeders Association of Nigeria, 
Garuba Bello says its members are not involved in kidnapping and says that anybody arrested for kidnapping or criminal activities should be dealt with. He insists Governor Akiri Dulu is not targeting all Fulanese but aiming at fortunate criminals from the state. As ethnocultural groups in the southwest states give deadlines to Fulani headers to leave their areas, the Allah Afyan of Oyo, Oba Lamidi Adeyemi, has in an open letter alerted President Muhammad Buhari to the growing feeling of frustration and despondency among Yoruba people caused by killer headsmen, bandits, and kidnappers suspected to be of Fulani descent, which if not urgently addressed, could lead to starvation and serious national security challenges. He says it is becoming obvious that the nature and character of banditry and kidnapping today are different from what they used to be. Today it is not merely an infraction in the course of doing business, but blatant and criminal violation of the constitutional right to life and liberty of innocent citizens of Yoruba land. All eyes are now on the Ondo state government to see if the presidency's directive will be obeyed or discarded by Governor Rotimi Akirudulu. All right, I still have with me Sonny Monidafe, who's the chieftain of the ruling All Progressives Congress, and Honorable Sani Zoro, a former member of the House of Representatives and former president of the Nigeria Union of Journalists, who likes calling himself a reporter. Well, let's start with you, uh, Sonny. Uh, these are very tough times for federalists like you, who like referring to themselves as Nigerians because they've lived in different parts of the country, they've been well accepted. But now we have eviction notice coming. We've had that coming from the north. In previous times, it was condemned. Now we're having this coming from the south, precisely the southwest. And it's been supported. And uh, we, the, the rhetoric we are hearing from some people in government seems to be disturbing. Are we discarding those constitutional provisions that protect Nigerians, irrespective of where they come from and where they reside? Let me speak categorically that I condemn what, I don't know it was condemned. I'm totally against what Governor Kiredoli said about asking those people to leave the forests and saying Fulani headsmen. Now, that's one thing that has taken a very dangerous dimension. Anything happens before even daybreak, we'll tell you Fulani headsmen were responsible. Now, will you say, because there's a lot of kidnapping in Igbo land, that every kidnapper, Igbo, Igbo kidnapper? Will you say the 419 going on, yeah, yeah, boys, in the, in the south, south yeah, anything nine. happens, you will say it's uh, Yoruba, right. 419 ers It's wrong. Such rhetorics led to, like you mentioned earlier, uh, um, Rwanda, the Rwanda and, uh, and, uh, the yes, so and then even Sierra Leone and Liberia close to us. We should be very careful what to say, very mindful. As I speak now, we know that Akira Dulu's wife is an Igbo lady. Now, if this uh, action succeeds, I assure you that somebody will now say, okay, it has been done and it succeeded, I will do it. Like it happened recently, Yoruba, I mean, Igbo to say, everybody leave our area. It's dangerous. We must think outside the box. Forget about these things. Lay us with the federal government. Find a way to solve these things. Don't be lazy by just concluding that kidnap every kidnapping full and yes, men. It is wrong. I've made this comment in many media houses. Something happens in um, maybe Yobe State. Killings, they'll tell you terrorists. But if it happens in, say, Taraba State, they will tell you full and yes, men. And they don't have any proof. When some uh, um, pastors were killed, Reverend Fathers were killed in Makodi about three years ago, about midnight, yes, before they break, they said headsmen killed them. No proof. Later we heard that people were, about seven of them were arrested, and no one was a full animal. So we should stop all this rhetoric. So now, I come back to the fact that attitudes must change. I will never make that kind of comment. I'm sure many people like me will not make that kind of comment. Talking about Ondo State, uh, uh, Taya Jagere, who was the PDP candidate PDP in Ondo State, his wife is from Akwaibom State. He's from Ondo. The SGF, his wife is from Oshun State. So we have intermarried. We should stop trying to play to the gallery and endanger our unity. I totally condemn, I condemn what Akira Dole said. And for the fact that people are supporting him, it's not right. If they claim that, um, Eurofight did anything now. He made that statement alone. I don't think the North said, go ahead and do it. Oh, they did right. not. This one that has given him support is not right. Now, let's uh, take a look at these yeah. issues critically. Yes. We have also had 
circumstances where headsmen uh, are arrested, even in the north here, and they confess to be Fulanese and all of that. While it is wrong to actually uh, use the tag against a whole tribe and all of that, yes. is it time for the north all to also mm. to rethink these issues mm. and see how they can embrace this issue of ranching that was proposed, but which was discarded, this issue of Ruga and all of that? Mm. How should the country actually tackle this? Mm. Because Akiri Dulu and some of his aides have said that the target is actually not against Fulani people, mm -hmm. but against headsmen who majorly are Fulani stock. Mm -hmm. Okay. First of all, there is a need to understand that the Fulani as an ethnic group are not only in Nigeria. They are in more than 30 different countries in Africa. For instance, they are in the entire 16 member countries in West Africa. They also are in the six Central African countries, all of them. They are also in parts of East Africa, including Tanzania, over 30. And everywhere there are these Fulanis, they continue with their ancient practice, you know, of herding. If they live in the bush, they are against Western education, or they have not embraced Western education, and they suffer a lot because of their practices. Nobody but never, practices. nobody practices. They are also like the Romans in, the, in Europe, for instance, people who have not voluntarily you know, um, embrace modernity. Yeah, I mean, and if you, you go, go to Paris, so you will see some of exactly. them. Yeah. In the UK, actually yeah. having, it's having cattle and mm. all of that. Mm. Mm. In, in, within mm. the city center. In, in mm. America, you know, South Dakota and North Dakota, the red, I mean, I mean the American Indians yes. are also there. Yeah. They don't even recognize Americans. This is the first time that President Biden is bringing one of them you know, to center stage of governance. So these things are, 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 not, uh, are not new to the world. But it is only in Nigeria that I know the Fulanis, also nomadic populations, are being given quick notices that they are illegal residents. And it's only in the south, even in the north. only in the southern part of the country. It's happening even in the north. Exactly. Because we've had how South actually against them and all of that. And that has always been the practice. That has always been, that has always been Exactly. So we need to look at it, you know, from this, you know, uh, robust point of view. That is one. Secondly, I do not believe, and I have always said so, that it is a lie that the kidnappings, the entire kidnapping records mm. in the southern parts of the country were being perpetrated by Fulanis. Yes. And my simple reason is this. How many Fulanis are in the southern part of the country that they can overwhelm the whole of Imo State, that they can overwhelm Arambra, they can uh, overwhelm the entire southwest? How many? Now, I have had cause as a journalist to call on editors well over seven years ago editors that were using Maasai nomads who were hanging AK-47, yes. you know, on I'm their shoulders. Nice and videos. then they were illustrating them <laughs> as Nigerian hatsmen. I Nigeria. said, no, the Fulani hatsmen have not reached that level At of all. sophistication. Sticks they and only use sticks and cutlasses and so on. And then go to any hamlet that is owned by Fulanis, either in the northern or uh, southern parts of the country, hardly will you count 50 round hats. Is that the population that will disturb the peace of Ife? Is that the population that will disturb the peace or even uproot, you know, or take over the entire forest, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Oyo town? And so on and so forth. Well, so no, that is I, one. I just want to also take you, just quickly before I forget, you know, these uh, 344 Kankara boys uh, that were kidnapped, kidnapped and all of that. Yes. We had instance where uh, some of our reporters confirmed to us in interviews mm. where they interviewed the locals and they actually said these people coming into their communities who perpetrated that are Fulanis. Are Fulanis. Well, definitely. And the Katsina State in government also said they are Fulanis and all of that. In Northern so Nigeria. it has become a national security In Northern concern. Nigeria. But let's look at the presidency's intervention in all of this yes as we look at i think the notice. presidency is just you trying to manage the right thing was done and what is you the see? right solution that should be found because you see it's a burning issue now and some people are issue. already killing some others or burning mm. houses in mm. the mm. South no, we have seen we have seen how such reprisal attacks can also play out and that is why people of conscience people of goodwill People who are not irredentists, people who are not agents of destabilization, they're waiting to say, look, 
please cool down tempers. But when you start hearing this kind of outbursts from those who have been elected to preside over you know, the affairs of people. When you start hearing this, you know, from traditional authorities, then you begin to get disturbed. Yes. Whether we will be <laughs> able actually, we, we you, know, to, to. You, you know, to see to the end of this. But let me say this. Uh, 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 like like uh, okay. Sony said, yes. the level of integration of Nigerians at the grassroots level is massive. The problem uh, with we Nigeria, not toy with that. we should not toy with not that, all. because yes. it has consequences. Okay, you let's see? hear from Sonia actually, very quickly, because I don't have enough time. There's this gentleman who is called uh, Sonia Demo, a.k.a. Igbo, who he has gone around, uh, you know, uh, your state, giving quick notice to lots of people. Exactly. Now, some people are saying he shouldn't be arrested. Well, we have, we have heard that the IG has given an order that he should be arrested. What should happen in this instance? Arrest him, if you ask me, because he made a statement saying that the Igbos should leave which was very wrong. And before Wike changed his stance, he made similar insinuations about northerners coming to disturb him in Potako River State, only to change his stance later. Look, we have already become one. We have integrated. Let's be careful. Let's not do this ethnic profiling. It's not good for our own it's health dangerous as a nation. All right. of Joe Biden as the first six U.S. president marks a new chapter from the legacy of Donald Trump. Some have described it as the dawn of a new era after four years of Trump's start.